Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about complete blood count and its utilization in emergency room or in wards. There are different types of blood cells which is which are produced by bone marrow, and blood also got plasma in that. Around sixty percent of the blood is plasma. That everyone should understand. Sixty percent is plasma. Forty percent are cells. In that. 40% we have RBCs or erythrocytes, WBCs or leukocytes, platelets or thrombocytes. So all these cells are produced inside the bone marrow and uh, when they come out it will be different categories of cells. And in WBC itself there are different types of cells, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, lymphocytes, like that uh, monocytes, different cells are there. The volume percentage of RBCs in the blood that is called as hematocrit. That hematocrit in 45% is uh, the normal value in males and 40% is the normal value of that hematocrit in females. So these are the common things first we are going to see. Then uh, uh, the important things also we will see. Other important things things also we will see. Uh, since uh, time limit is there, we cannot discuss the blood counts in depth. There are uh, different types of uh, uh, investigation like peripheral smear and all that we cannot discuss here. Now, anemia definition by WHO at sea level, hemoglobin percentage less than 13 gram per deciliter in men, hemoglobin less than 12 gram per deciliter in non-pregnant women. Adolescents it is 12 to adolescents with uh, 12 to 14 also uh, same. Hemoglobin less than 11.5 gram per deciliter in children 5 to 11 years. Hemoglobin less than 11 gram per percentage in children aged 6 to 59 months. So depending on the age and uh, uh, other factors it may slightly vary. So, here only age is given. So, according to the age there is a slight difference in hemoglobin percentage. So, common causes of anemia you can remember A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I like that. Acute blood loss, it can be a trauma, it can be a GI blood loss, it can be menstrual blood loss, bone marrow failure or bone marrow infiltration, myelodysplastic syndrome, uh, aplastic anemia, leukemias and other infiltrative disorders, B12 folic acid iron deficiency. They all uh, try to improve the uh, production of uh, bone marrow. If B12 and folic acid is deficient then patient can have anemia. Chronic diseases can also produce anemia because of the uh, suppression of bone marrow by inflammatory uh, cells. Chronic blood loss, it can be mainly due to uh, GI blood loss, uh, it can be due to hookworm infestation, there is a classical chronic blood loss or any other ulcers, malignancies, uh, chronic menstrual blood loss, all these things are possible. Next one is destruction of RBC, that is called as hemolysis, it can be due to intraerythrocytic hemolysis, extraerythrocytic hemolysis, that is extracorporeal and intracorporeal. Uh, intracorporeal it can be defect in the RBC like a patient can have uh, membrane defects like uh, elliptocytosis, uh, poikilocytosis uh, and uh, all these things. Membrane defects are uh, the defects in the membrane the RBCs can lyse very fast. Then inside RBC hemoglobinopathies are there, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia. Then enzyme defect G6PD deficiency, pyruvate kinase deficiency. These are intracorpuscular defe defects. Extracorpuscular defects it is mainly due to uh, various causes like immune mediated destruction, uh, hemolyt immune mediated hemolytic anemia and other sepsis, trauma, uh, DIC and all. Sometimes malaria also can produce hemolysis that is because the malarial parasite get inside the RBC and destruct the RBC there. Then spl large spleen also produces uh, increased destruction of RBCs. Erythropoietin deficiency is mainly seen in renal failure, chronic renal failure because erythropoietin is produced in the kidney. So, uh, whenever there is a kidney failure, patient can have erythropoietin deficiency and anemia. Folic acid deficiency, it is mainly seen in uh, patients who is having 
like uh, pre patient is who are on methotrexate that is classical example drugs which can produce folate deficiency sulfonamides methotrexate all these things many cancer drugs can have folic acid deficiency chronic and acute gi bleed uh, mainly due to ulcers hookworm infestation and all hypothyroidism again bone marrow suppression can occur in hypothyroidism iron deficiency is one of the major cause for anemia all around the world in the iron within the iron deficiency anemia hookworm infestation is the major cause for anemia in children now cell morphologies in anemia that can be easily picked up by your investigation uh, we have different types of cells microcytic hypochromic normocytic normochromic macrocytic uh, uh, microcytic means small rbcs macrocytic means large rbcs uh, mcv less than 80 mcv more than 100 will tell you whether it is microcytic macrocytic and all mcv mch mchc will give you most of the Uh, problems in, uh, in the first first line investigation itself whenever there is anemia you have to see what is mcv what is mch what is mchc it can easily tell you what is the diagnosis if all are reduced then it is mostly iron deficiency anemia other than iron deficiency anemia thalassemia sideroblastic anemia chronic anemia of chronic disease lead poisoning and all that so whenever mcv mch mchc is low you have to always check uh, serum iron and serum ferritin one peripheral smear is required one hemoglobin electrophoresis is required any other chronic inflammations are there we have to find out so we can get a diagnosis normocytic normochromic anemia everything is normal so that is classically hemolytic anemia patient can have some amount of jaundice cholelithiasis can be there after acute blood loss like uh, acute uh, gi blood loss or uh, trauma bone marrow failure by chemotherapy or cancer infiltrates renal disease renal disease it's mainly due to uh, erythropoietin deficiency remember many patients who is having renal failure it is due to erythropoietin deficiency even then many patients can have iron deficiency anemia also so they can have uh, mcv mch mchc low macrocytic means everything is increased mchc will be normal the most common cause for megaloblastic anemia is b12 deficiency in our practice it is due to the uh, deficiency of b12 because many of these patients are vegetarian and they are not adequately uh, supplemented with b12 folic acid deficiency is mainly due to the drugs which can inhibit folic acid production that is methotrexate is a classical example if you uh, give methotrexate without folic acid many patients can have neutropenia long term sulfonamides many cancer drugs also can produce b12 deficiency other conditions like aplastic anemia other uh, alcohol disease alcohol chronic alcohol use liver diseases myelodysplastic syndrome all these things also can produce megaloblastic anemia you can see the cells normal cell small cell and large cell normal cell anemia it is normocytic normochromic normochromic means iron content in that uh, cell may be normal cell is not pale whereas microcytic hypochromic means the cell is pale and cell is small the, that is classically seen in uh, iron deficiency anemia but differential diagnosis you can see from this chart now once you get a patient who is having anemia you can easily pick up uh, what is the diagnosis from that initial blood index itself in that mcv is one of the most important investigation uh, so you are seeing a patient who is having anemic and you are seeing hemoglobin percentage is low look at the mcv mcv will exactly tell what is the diagnosis you can see this chart if it is mcv is 80 to 100 then it can be uh, leukemias uh, aplastic anemia pure cell uh, red aplasia hemorrhage hemolytic anemia all these things for that you ne- need to do reticulocyte production index if the index is less than 2% it is hypoproliferative that means bone marrow production is not good if the uh, reticulocyte count and production index more than 2% or good production then that is a hyperproliferative bone marrow that means peripheral destruction is there but bone marrow is normal that is trying to compensate that for for that uh, defect defect so 
there is a most important uh, investigation if the mcv is normal so it's a normal cytic anemia always check the reticular side count whereas mcv is low the most common diagnosis is iron deficiency anemia so you have to check serum iron levels and serum ferritin levels serum ferritin is more important than serum iron uh, because that is a better in index for uh, iron deficiency so serum ferritin and serum iron low iron low ferritin high tibc indicates iron deficiency anemia low iron ferritin with low tibc anemia of chronic illness so tibc will tell you whether it is anemia of chronic illness or iron deficiency anemia then other important thing is mcv more than 100 mcv more than 100 means mostly it is b12 deficiency so macrocytic anemia we always check the peripheral smear you have differential diagnosis for that uh, always check the b12 levels and folic acid level levels and take the history in detail because many patients will be vegetarian diet they are not taking b12 tablets so there is a high chance of b12 deficiency they also can have peripheral neuro neuropathy some dementia some visual uh, defect subacute combined degeneration of code all these things are there means it is b12 deficiency folic acid deficiency is mainly seen in some of the drugs patient is having um, uh, methotrexate like that whatever it is whenever we have doubt investigate that case for whether the b12 or folic acid is normal if investigation is not possible give 3 4 days b12 injection high dose of b12 injection that is 1000 microgram if you give if the reticulocyte production index is improving that means the bone marrow is responding for your b12 no need to do any investigation continue b12 injection till the patient uh, improves in clinical sim- symptoms then may- make the patient on put the patient on tablet b12 and folic acid whereas uh, b12 deficiency is not there then other causes we have to suspect alcohol myelodysplastic syndrome chronic liver disease marrow uh, depressive syndromes like that so some of these patients may require bone marrow study if the mcv is high then we have to always rule out uh, 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 like uh, hemolytic anemia by doing a peripheral smear uh, mcv is also uh, can be normal in hemolytic anemia whatever it is we have to do a peripheral smear and look for abnormal cells and abnormal rbcs and always try to send b12 folic acid levels if they are normal only we have to suspect other causes now red blood cell indices that is uh, uh, there are uh, three four different indices are there in that most important is rdw so uh, red cell indices we look for size shape and hemoglobin content of rbcs uh, that uh, rdw is there that is red cell distribution width then mcv is there mch mch is there mchc is there that we'll discuss in the next slide rdw indicates the variation in the rbcs uh, rbcs you can have a, a peripheral sphere in that uh, degree of anisocytosis you can see high rdw indicates large variation in rbc size a high rdw indicates iron deficiency myelodysplastic syndrome and hemoglobinopathies that is very important you can note this and then next investigations are mcv mch mchc we have seen in the previous slide low mcv low mchc low mch always indicates microcytic hypochromic anemia so that is one of the uh, easiest thing you can make out uh, from this red blood cell indices but other things also there we will see that uh, mcv means mean corpuscular volume it's in, it indicates the size of the rbcs whenever si- uh, mcv is low that is microcytic anemia if it is normal it is normocytic anemia if it is elevated means uh, a megaloblastic anemia that we have seen already seen the previous slides what are the causes mch is mean corpuscular hemoglobin uh, is the average of hemoglobin content in rbcs a low mch indicates hypochromia of uh, blood rbcs it can be seen in iron deficiency thalassemia and all that also we have seen in the previous slide mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is average hemoglobin concentration per rbcs low mchc indicates iron deficiency high mchc indicates spherocytosis that's a uh, defect of the rbc membrane 
and RBC agglutination that is hemolytic anemias. So this this uh, MCH MCHC can be elevated in hemolytic anemias. Now according to uh, the peripheral smear or uh, 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 size of the RBCs you can divide that uh, uh, cells into normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic or megaloblastic that can be picked up by MCV levels. MCV, MCH also will tell you what type of anemia is there. So peripheral sm smear will help you to diagnose the anemia. Same like uh, blood, red blood cell indices like MCV, MCH also will help you to diagnose what type of anemia it is. So causes you can remember, uh, 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 the first one is uh, normocytic, you can remember CAHA, uh, there is chronic renal failure, acute blood loss, hemolysis, anemia of chronic illness, microcytic, remember tails, thalassemia, anemia of chronic disease, iron deficiency, lead poisoning and ceteroblastic anemia. Macrocytic, you can remember malt, megaloblastic anemia, B12, folic acid deficiency, alcohol, liver disease, thyroid disease and hypothyroidism. So remember, uh, you can remember the causes like this even then detail uh, history, detail clinical examination and you have to always correlate with the, uh, 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 the hemoglobin percentage, blood cell indices, peripheral smear because uh, if you further read uh, to the details of each anemia, many of these clinical uh, features can be seen in other types of anemia also. So these types of, uh, these type, types of clinical changes or lab investigations are not uh, not the standard feature of any anemia but uh, when we are treating uh, large number of anemia for easy diagnosis this type of uh, uh, easy ways will help you uh, to make a diagnosis. Now reticulocyte production index that is one of the important thing reticulocyte production index means uh, whenever there is a peripheral destruction of RBC or uh, the uh, removal of RBCs from your uh, circulation due to any re reason, if the bone marrow is good that will try to uh, produce RBCs. So if the pro production increases then uh, reticulocyte production indexes in, in reticulocyte product production index will be more than 3%. If it is less than 2% then that indicates a bone marrow failure, decreased production of reticulocytes uh, meaning loss of RBC and decreased production of uh, RBC from the bone marrow. If production index is three per, more than 3%, destruction is there but there is a compensatory increased production from the bone marrow. So that also you can see but uh, most of the time you, you, you will have to ask this type of investigation as a secondary investigation because initially you do not get uh, these type of things in uh, routine blood test we will have to ask for reticulocyte production index but it can be easily calculated by a pathologist. Now next important thing uh, other than uh, uh, RBC defect it is thrombocytopenia. Normally you know that in our body most of the patients will have platelet count of uh, 1,50,000 to 4,50,000. If it is less than 1,50,000 or if it is sometimes we call it as thrombocytopenia less than 1 lakh. If it is less than 1 lakh then it is thrombocytopenia. Uh, some uh, book says it is less than 1 lakh 50,000 it is thrombocytopenia. Some book says it is less than 1 lakh it is defined as thrombocytopenia. Whatever it is if there is a bleeding tendency and low platelet it is significant. So uh, if it is more than 4 lakh 50,000 we, we can call it as uh, thrombocytosis. Uh, classical thrombocytosis occurs in uh, there are different conditions but routine clinical practice it is mostly due to some inflammation like you can see a patient who is having severe uh, rheumatoid arthritis. If you see the platelet count sometimes it can be very high maybe 6000 or 7000. They can they also can have raised CRP, raised ferritin uh, uh, all these things. So this uh, the thrombocytosis is sometimes there it, it is counted as a inflammatory marker but if there is a uh, myeloproliferative disease then also you can get thrombocytosis. But if it is less than 1,50,000 especially when it is less than 1 lakh then it is a significant problem. If it is less than uh, if it is like uh, 1 lakh to 1,50,000 it is mild thrombocytopenia. 
and 50,000 to 1 lakh it is moderate thrombocytopenia less than 50,000 it is a severe thrombocytopenia so uh, you, whenever we see thrombocytopenia in routine blood test we have to always ask for a peripheral blood smear that is very very important because most of these uh, point of care equipments or uh, routine uh, computer uh, generated prints the computer may or the point of care equipment may pick the clumping of the platelet they, they pick up uh, clumping as a single platelet maybe four or five platelets clump together and it will be counted as one platelet so that produces significant error in a uh, routine uh, computer generated uh, count or in a point of care, care machine generated count in that sense uh, we need we always need a uh, peripheral smear to get exact count of the platelets. So whenever we are seeing thrombocytopenia ask for a peripheral blood smear the pathologist will uh, tell you exactly what is the number of platelets in that uh, uh, that sample otherwise there there can be errors in uh, 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 that sampling so we have to be very careful. Now cause of uh, thrombocytopenia you can remember platelets it is easy to remember one is platelet disorder disseminated intravascular coagulation uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or immune thrombocytopenic purpura it is an immune mediated platelet destruction ttp uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura this is due to a defect in the adams 13 protein uh, leukemia that is due to infiltration of bone marrow and uh, reduction in the platelet uh, production Antibodies mediated uh, I, that is ITP that is immune mediated thrombocytopenia SLE is a uh, disease which can produce immune mediated uh, problem in almost all organs in our body that also can produce thrombocytopenia anemia and bone marrow failure also so simple iron deficiency anemia itself you can get thrombocytopenia and any bone marrow failure also you can get trauma secondary to bleeding and DIC you can get thrombocytopenia and large spleen produce destruction of platelets in our body because uh, normal spleen itself there will be some amount of destruction of platelets uh, occurring in our body but that all old platelet but when there is a uh, splenic enlargement that produces massive destruction of platelets. Liver disease with portal hypertension again it is due to the toxicity of liver disease and uh, splenomegaly ethanol alcohol related problem treatment heparin, aspirin, chemotherapy all these things can produce uh, 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 thrombocytopenia but not in all cases heparin produced heparin induced thrombocytopenia but that is a rare condition aspirin produces this uh, uh, like uh, uh, that can produce the dysfunction of platelet now it will not reduce the number of platelet but it will produce dysfunction of platelet if you take large amount of aspirin only this will happen sepsis again it is something like uh, DIC and ITP destruction of platelet occurs there. So thrombocytopenia patient develops purpuras all over the body they are uh, non palpable purpuras uh, palpable purpuras are always seen in vasculitic disorders but here it is non palpable purpuras all over the body. So that can produce bleeding tendencies the low platelets can produce bleeding tendencies if the platelet count is very less like less than 10,000 or if there is a significant bleeding then we have to treat the patient with platelet transfusion otherwise platelet transfusion routine platelet transfusion is not recommended because the normal half life of the platelet or normal lifespan of the platelet in our body is only 7 days normal platelet which is produced by our body is having a lifespan of only 7 days but when you transfuse uh, a, a one person's to one person's platelet to another person that will leave only for one day so unnecessarily transfusing platelets are not good so only if there is an emergency we have to transfuse platelets whereas rbc's they can live around 120 days uh, like uh, three months it can live in our body so even if we transfuse uh, uh, an another person's uh, blood if there is no immunogenicity that means there is no uh, immune mediated hemolytic anemia the platelet the RBCs can live up to 100 or 120 days so uh, th uh, so that will be very safe uh, to transfuse 
RBCs, but whereas uh, platelet trans transfusion is not uh, uh, not uh, having any effect, prophylactic platelet transfusion is having no effect uh, in clinical practice. Only if there is an emergency or only if there is a significant bleeding, you should transfuse the platelets. Other problems in WBC count is next one is total count, differential count. Total count means total number of uh, WBC count in our blood normal is around 4000 to 11000 mil uh, cubic millimeter. Differential count neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils. They are different types of cells in our body. Normally the, the uh, point of care e equipment or computer generated printout you can get all these counts. But always better to depend on the peripheral smear if there is a defect. So, in a routine examination, this is okay to get a point of care equipment uh, uh, computer generated print. But when there is a problem, like if suppose the counts are very high or very low, always depend on a peripheral blood smear because that will give the exact count. Whereas, machine sometimes can produce false report. So, we have to be always uh, depend on depends on the uh, peripheral blood smear. Neutrophilia means increased WBC count, neutropenia means low WBC count. Neutrophilia mainly indicates infections, especially bacterial infection, fungal infections, myocardial infection that is an inflammation, pulmonary infarction, malignancies like tumors, lymphoma, uh, leukemia, myeloproliferative disorders like leukemia, polycythemia, uh, physiological pregnancy that, uh, that all cells will increase during pregnancy. So, any infection or, or any inflammation your blood cells will increase, so especially WBC count. Whereas neutropenia means it is reduction of WBC count, many viral infection you get low WBC count. One of the bacterial infection which can produce low WBC count and type, that is typhoid, brucellosis, rickettsia, TB, severe sepsis, AIDS, all these conditions you can get low WBC count. Normally, viral fevers will produce low WBC count. Marrow infiltration by malignancy, TB, alcohol induced problems, connective tissue disorders, many drugs can also produce uh, neutropenia. The problem with neutropenia is uh, whenever we have an infection, the neutrophils are the first line defensive system in our body. If the neutrophils are not there, you get almost all types of infections, opportunistic infection many other malignancies, all these things. So, if there is a neutropenia, then uh, there is a chance of uh, uh, opportunistic infection or neutropenic fevers are very, uh, very, uh, very common and it is possible. So, neutropenia is classified into uh, different categories. Uh, absolute neutrophil count can be more than 1500. Uh, 1000 to 1500, 500 to 1000, less than 500. So, all these things indicates you can calculate the absolute neutrophil count by percentage of neutrophils plus percentage of bands into total WBC count by 100. That will give you absolute neutrophil count. The importance of absolute neutrophil count, we know that if there is low neutrophils, that is going to reduce your immunity. That is the first thing. It is going to reduce the immunity. If the immunity is reduced, then the patient can have infection. If the Im immunity is very, very reduced, very, very low, then patient can have opportunistic infection. Opportunistic infection means patient is already having this type of pathogens in his body. Whenever uh, the body immune system is good, they will not come and attack your body, they will not come out. But they are inside our body or in, in on the skin or the nasal cavity many areas you can see this type of opportunistic pathogens. But when the immunity is low, they produce all types of problem. One of the important opportunistic infection is pneumocystis gerovaci pneumonia. It's classically seen in HIV patients, malignancy patient, patient who are taking anti-malignancy drugs, neutropenic patients and various other infections also classically produce problem in neutropenia. Now, eosinophilia, we always think that eosinophilia indicates allergy. So, you can remember it as allergies, allergy, Addison disease, lymphoma, L-tryptophan, uh, eczema, respiratory diseases, gastroenteritis, 
infections like parasite infection, collagen vascular disease, Churg stress syndrome, pan, SLE, all these things. Other abnormalities like basophils, basophilia, it causes uh, causes are mainly myeloproliferative disorder, inflammatory bowel disease, and deficiency anemia. Monocytes can be seen in TB, malignancy, IBD, lymphocytosis, viral infection, lymphoma, lymphatic leukemia, postplenectomy. Lymphopenia has got some importance in uh, among all these things because lymphopenia is classically seen in SLE, HIV infection, lymphoma. Lymphoma uh, sometimes it can be increased also. Uh, sarcoidosis, chronic renal failure, all these conditions you can get lymphopenia. But uh, whenever we are seeing all this finding, you have to see the clinical correlation and we have to always uh, check the peripheral blood smear. You cannot only depend on this computer generated or point of care machine generated printout. That can sometimes it can be wrong because if you don't put adequate sample, if you dilute the sample, if it is taken from an IV uh, cannulation sample. Uh, the, uh, so there are so many de uh, defects can occur during the sampling. So we cannot fully depend on this type of point of care equipment. We are to, whenever there is a defect seen in the uh, computer generated print, uh, we have to always depend on the peripheral blood smear. So we have discussed about one of the most common investigation we do in our practice that is CBC and we always ask CRP also. CBC, CRP will be together. Previously it was CBC with ESR. Nowadays we are not looking for ESR because ESR takes some time to get. Uh, if there is a proper point of care lab, you can e easily do the C e e ESR. But nowadays we have a point of care equipment with CBC and CRP. So we always depend on the CBC and CRP and CRP is a better marker of inflammation than ESR. CRP can be elevated in most of the inflammations and infections. Any inflammation or any infection CRP will be elevated. So CRP is a marker of inflammation. CBC always tell you what is the uh, hemoglobin, what is MCV, MCH, MCHC what is a uh, neutrophil count, what are the different differential count, different types of neutrophils, absolute neutrophil count, platelets, peripheral blood smear, all these things are very very important in clinical practice. So whenever we get an abnormal result, always look for the peripheral smear, always go back and re-examine re the patient. That is very very important. So if you are getting a platelet count, low platelet count, look for any uh, throng, uh, like uh, markers on, on the skin like the, uh, any any bleeding tendency is there on the skin all and always check for the spleen if there is a thrombocytopenia examine the patient look for spleen any cardiac murmurs uh, any purpuric rashes over the body so all these things are important sometimes we will be asking blindly a cbc you will not be see, uh, you will not be examining the patient properly but when you get an abnormal result, go back to the patient and re-examine the patient, confirm the diagnosis and always depend on the peripheral smear to uh, reconfirm the diagnosis. Thank you.